Hey friends, my cat and I are going to show you how to create a video using Adobe Spark. It's really easy um, and <laughs> anyway, Adobe Spark is really easy. So I'm going to disappear and share my screen with you and walk you through how to make a video using Adobe Spark. The first thing you need to do is go to Adobe Spark. I use the web version. There is an app if you prefer apps. Um, so to do that, you're gonna go to spark.adobe.com. Spark.adobe.com. You should see this welcome screen. I log in with a school account. I'm pretty sure students have free school accounts from IBC. So you're going to put in your email address. Make sure you put in your IVC email and click continue. Select company or school account. And you should be taken to IVC's single sign on page. From here, log in with your IVC credentials, and it should take you to Adobe Spark. Um, I have projects already created, but yours will probably be blank if this is your first time using Adobe Spark. You'll notice that you can create lots of different things in Adobe Spark. We are going to create a video, so I'm going to click this plus sign and select video. I'm gonna give it a title and click next. Here you can start with a template so it will kind of guide you through a pre-made video or you can start from scratch. This means starting with a blank video. I'm going to pick this one just for fun. When you select your template, Adobe Spark has a guide or a tutorial that it will show you, so you can pretty much get started here. If you want to keep listening to my tutorial, cool. If you want to log in and get started with theirs, also cool. So the first thing you're going to do is see this screen and start putting in your content or your information. You can include video clips. Um, you can include video clips that you find online and save on your computer or that you film yourself. You can upload them. You can include text, photos. Again, you can include photos that come preloaded onto Adobe Spark or you can upload your own. I'm going to see what they have in free photos here. Uh, let's start with a robot. Cool. So now I have a photo and I can add on top of it if I want. On the right, you'll see that I can have this text be full screen. I can do a split screen, a caption, or a title and text. I'm going to do title just for fun. I can make it bigger or smaller, and I can delete it. So I'm gonna leave this here. This is now my first slide or my first kind of image. You can see that at the bottom. Here I can see notes. Um, over here, I can decide how long I want this to be on the screen. And if I click the microphone button, I can narrate. This is important because your videos do need to be narrated. Um, so you'll click here and record your narration. If you want to preview what this will look like, you can click the play button here to see just this clip, or you can click down here to see the whole video. So I have my title slide pretty much how I want it. I'm going to move on to this one. And here, let's add in a video clip. Oh, I have to use one for my computer and I don't have one. So I'll go for another photo and I'm just going to use the same robot. I like this one. And then I'm going to add some information about this robot. 
This time I'm going to do a split screen and I want to switch them. I want the robot on the right. If I click edit, I can zoom in and out and I can drag the robot over. Over here again, I'm going to add text. Something commercially, something catchy. Go. Okay. So now I've got two clips. That's enough for me to get started. Uh, actually, let's do one more. And let's see. Maybe I want a problem here. Maybe I'm tired. Mm. Here. She... Here we go. This person's overwhelmed. Okay. And full screen, what if I do a caption? Okay, I'm gonna leave this full screen. Now that I've added this one, I actually think that this problem should come before the solution. So I'm gonna drag my clips down here at the bottom. I'm clicking, and I'm dragging it over. So let's see what this looks like so far. Okay, not bad. I have blank um, slides because I didn't fill in those clips yet. Up here, I can change the theme. They have all these themes down here. Pay attention to the transitions and the font. That's really what the theme is. Oh, I kind of like that that one's a circle. And then this is telling me that I can change the color by clicking here. And then I can um, look down lower and change a little bit more. So that changed my theme a little bit. You'll notice the font changed and this changed to that tan kind of color. Up here I can change between widescreen or square and I can also change the background music. Please make sure that the background music is not too loud because narration is an important part of this assignment. I want to make sure I can understand your voice. When the background music is too loud, it's really hard to hear what's spoken over it sometimes. If you click the little play button, you can preview. And I can adjust the volume up here. And now when I play, there's a tiny bit of background music. You can't really hear it, which is fine with me, because I know I'm going to narrate over it. The last important thing about Adobe Spark is that you can share this, and you can invite other people to edit. So if multiple people are in a group collaborating on one video, you would click this plus sign and type in the email addresses of the people that you want to invite. The other thing that you can do is copy a link and then you can paste that link in to whatever group messaging platform you're already using. That way everyone can kind of work on their own time but still be all in one place and see those most recent updates. When you are finished, you'll download it and then turn it in. Okay, I'm back. I know that was surprising. I hope that was helpful. Um, I actually do use Adobe Spark pretty often, so if you have any questions, let me know. I am here to help.